did it. Hello everyone, it's Shirley here. It's going to give everything a minute here to settle in and see if I have any buddy coming on. And again, this is a surprise, probably for me as well as it is for you. I'm trying this out. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? Not sure what time it is for you, but I'm glad you joined. Okay, um, the last time I was on live, I was working on a paper piecing project, and I thought I'd come on and try and see if I could just salvage that. My live stream didn't work too well, but I'm just going to switch here for a moment. And I think, Rob, you had sent me a message about um, hoping I felt better. Yes, I am feeling much better now. Um, some medications were changed and everything, and I am feeling much better. Hi, Kim. Um, I guess you probably would like to see me, wouldn't you? I'd like to see what I look like, too. <laughs> Hi. I'll just give it a second here. Sorry, I'm still new at this, so it's going to take me a while to get adjusted to reading chat, thinking about what I'm doing, and trying to make sure my stream is running good. Um, okay, it's cold here in Calgary, Alberta, and... Um, so, well, last time I had showed you a few things, and uh, I was working on the foundation paper piecing butterfly pattern. Um, I think last time I had shared, um, I'm just going to switch my camera here so you can see what I've got on my desk here. Okay, um, I was working on the butterfly pattern and I had gone through and picked out the fabrics that I was going to use. Um, these are the fabrics and I had labeled them according to A, B, C, and D. And I'd worked on the, was trying to show you a few things about uh, freezer paper. And uh, as I was working on the pattern, I did find a few things that weren't quite what I had um, expected in the pattern. I did manage to complete one, though. And I went ahead and found out what is different about the pattern I'm using. So last time we had, I showed you how I made my little diagram for the colors I chose. And I'm going to start showing you how I work with the freezer paper pattern. And what I had done was I printed out um, two copies 
on freezer paper of the butterfly pattern. I'm just looking through my patterns I had printed out or the uh, diagrams. Hi Mona. So one thing I did find out about the pattern I'm using is that they only had um, the sections each section was labeled A, B, C, D, E, and F. But what I did find was that none of the sections were labeled. And I'm going to switch to my phone or to the sewing machine camera so I can give you an up close. Um, so I can show you up close what I'm talking about okay so I'm going to put this underneath and I'll show you on section A now on section A it only had the A in one section so what I did was I put a little A in front of the four and an A in front of each one of the sections. So I went ahead and then on B section I did the same thing. I put a B in front of the section 1, a B in front of 2, and a B in front of the 3. And I did them all like that. Okay, so the reason I did that is because Normally, when I'm working with a pattern, I like to cut out my fabrics all at once. So, from my two copies of the freezer paper, I cut out one whole section, cut out the pieces, and then... I have one set that I use for my piecing and this other one that I printed out on the freezer paper. I'm going to show you how I cut out my fabrics. So this one of course I'm going to put the A on there because this is all section A or unit A. So I'll make sure I have an A in front of each one of those. So then next what I did was I labeled on this piece here I'll switch to my other camera. So what I have on here is I switched or switched to this camera here so I can show you that there is my A1 and then the other in the bottom I have what fabric I'm using for that section. So this is section A1, fabric D. This is section A2, fabric C. Okay, so now what I've done is I am going to, so I don't confuse myself, I'm going to circle the sections because when I get going on this I kind of forget what I'm doing but this helps me to know that this is the section okay so I have one two three four five six and then the alphabet here corresponds to the fabric I'm using
So now I have two pieces. So one is going to be my stitching pattern. And one is going to be the one that I cut out my pattern pieces from. Thanks, Mona. I'm glad everything is working out. And hopefully there's no buffering this time. So I've got two pieces for every section that I'm working on. Next, what I did on all my pieces, I will fold along all the lines. Now, if you're just using regular paper, you can do the same thing. So what I've done is I've just taken a piece of template plastic and this one just happens to have squares on it. But anything, you can even cut out a piece off of a, oh, those plastic salad containers or uh, things that you get cookies in, anything that's very thin. And what I did was I went along and I start folding on my lines before I even go and do any stitching. So, and I always start with the highest number. So on this, I have A6 and it's going to be my fabric B. And I'm going to fold, place my template plastic along that line so I can see the number. And I'm going to fold and here again I'm using freezer paper and there's a reason that I like the freezer paper and as I go along you're going to see it. Next I folded along the line, number six line that I can see that. I'm now going to turn my paper. So I want to go to number five. So I'll lay my template plastic down and cover everything except the number five section. Folding it. Now I want to go to four section. So there is A4. I can read A4. I'll fold it all the way along there. Next, I'll go to number three. Fold it along that line. Number two, and when I get to number two, number one should be folded already on all the lines. I do that to all the pieces. So however many pieces you have, you will pre-fold. On this piece, and here's where I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen anybody else do this on, I've watched so many YouTube uh, videos on this that, uh, and I don't think I've seen anybody do this. For my second copy, I have everything labeled sections and the fabric is on there. Now what I'm going to do is again I'm going to start with the highest number. And guess what I'm going to do? I am going to again take 
a ruler this time. I'm going to line it up on that line so I can see section A6. And I'm going to cut it apart. And I'll set that off to the side. Now, if you have small pieces, because it's freezer paper, I can just iron them on there and they're not going to go any place. Next, I'm going to go to section A5. I'll take and I'll line that up again the same way I did its folding and I'll line my ruler up so I can see the section A5. If at any time you have a question, ask me, and I'm trying to read chat and everything, so hopefully it'll all work out. So there's my A5. Now, I want to cut along the line, so I'm reading section A4. I'll just iron that down quickly so I don't lose it. Okay, and now the next section is three. And I know this might be kind of weird the way I do it, but it has helped me immensely with getting my brain wrapped around everything. So now I've cut out section A3. I'm going to cut along the line between A1 and A2. And I'm always looking to see the number. And I'll cut that apart. Now off to the side here. Okay, those are the pieces for this section. Okay, I've got that done. I'll go through all my pattern pieces, each section, and I'll do the same thing. Now, um, and you can see here, I've done it previous one, I have all my pieces. Now that I have everything cut apart, I'm going to go and cut out my fabrics. If you've done that to all of the pieces, I'm now going to take and look for my color or my fabric, which is fabric B. And here is fabric B. I'm going to look here. This is fabric B. And this one is fabric B. I have two pieces that belong to C, which I've chosen this as my fabric C. So I'm going to take my fabric C, which is section A3, and I'm going to iron that on. That way, I know after I've cut out my fabrics for section A, that's fabric D. So there's my C. Fabric D is this one. And you can see I've just labeled it with um, a little freezer paper label. And that keeps me straight. 
I'm going to take section A1, which is fabric D, and I'm just going to iron that on there. Any questions so far? Am I making sense? Hope I am. Okay, next. I don't see any questions, so hopefully I'm still going. So now for my fabric, I'm going to cut out these sections. Around the outside edges of my pattern pieces, there is the quarter inch seam. Where I cut, there's no seam. So I have to add seam allowance. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pattern pieces and I'm going to place them on my fabric B. And I'm using a little Dritz mini iron because the pattern pieces are small. The other thing before I get started here, I should tell you that what I use also is a piece of, don't know, nope, well, I'll get a different one. Um, don't know what I did with it. These two sheets that I have here are um, silicone. Silicone? Yeah, they're heat resistant. You can iron on them. They're baking. One of them is a baking sheet, which you can buy at the dollar store. Um, inexpensive. This one is a craft mat, and you can iron on it and everything. And I use those. Hi, Terry. Yeah, I didn't know I was going to go live today as well. It's, I still don't know how to schedule a live stream, so that's why I just pop in at any time. Okay, so with this, and of course, you see, I cut it with my rotary cutter. I have another one someplace, but I don't know what I did with it. Could be underneath here. Okay, so these are pressing sheets and I'm going to use uh, I'll use uh, this one I don't know what I did with my other one I had one that wasn't cut anyway these when I get them at the dollar store um, I cut them into smaller pieces so I can use them on my ironing surface so now I am going to take my B fabric pieces and I'll just press this a little bit get some of the wrinkles out now if you're working with a print you want the wrong side of the fabric up so it's the wrong side of the fabric up and then you're going to take your pieces And you can lay them on, leaving an outside edge. This edge has seam allowance already added to it, but I add extra fabric around. So now I'm going to lay that down. Now if you want, I'm, I'm using scraps. They're just scraps. So I've ironed that piece on. It's not going to go any place. And I can refer back to it later. So the next piece is, I'm going to put on, is A5 fabric B, which is this. And I'm going to lay that on here. But I want to leave enough in between my pieces so that the cut edge has seam allowance. I can cut it out. So 
if you want to save fabric, you can. I'm going to just iron these back on my board here so I don't lose them. And they won't get lost on me. So, if you want, you can just take a pencil or a friction pen. Uh, where's my friction pen? Hello, there we are. Now you want to leave on this piece here, you can leave approximately, they tell you to have a half an inch around all the edges. I find that I don't need it when I work with this method. Now, if you aren't using freezer paper, you could use a glue stick and just stick your regular paper to your fabric. This is why I like the freezer paper. It's not going anywhere. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little ruler. I've got extra along the outside edges. So I'm going to take my ruler and they're saying to add a half an inch. And that's to me is a waste of fabric you don't need all that fabric now i'm going to add uh let's see there's my quarter inch mark i'll add three eighths of an inch and you'll see where if i draw my line that's going to give me a reference point to put the next piece so i need three-eighths of an inch on this side to lay my piece down. So I want to make sure that I have three-eighths of an inch away from this line here. So I'll lay my ruler on there and again for you if you want to start out add that extra half an inch but you'll find you don't really need it. So here's my seam allowance here, right here, and here's my seam allowance for the next piece. And this is the way I save fabric. I'm going to lay this down just like this. I could lay it like this along that line but then my fabric wouldn't be on the straight of grain. So I'm going to lay it down like this. And I'm just going to press that piece down. And I can get rid of these marks because I'm going to be cutting those out. The next piece, there's my seam allowance. And I'm going to place that on there. Shouldn't be ironing on my cutting mat, should I? So if I press that on there, I now have enough on all sides. Now I'm going to cut out fabric B. I'll take my ruler and I'll cut out the, this one section here. And I'll line that three-eighths of an inch mark up. Hi, Stephanie. Goodness sake, seeing you here today. That's awesome. So now I've cut it. Great to see you. So now I've cut it so that I have seam allowance on all four or all three sides, four sides, however many there are. On this edge here where you can see the seam allowance, I'm just going to cut cut away because I don't need that little piece. Now, I should show you we're going to keep I'm going to empty my little bin out here. This is where I keep all my fabric scraps as I'm cutting. So we'll call that waste. 
So there is B. I'm going to cut out my next piece. I can see I have seam allowance on these two sides, so I don't need to leave too much. I'll cut it away approximately an eighth of an inch. And on this one, I'll line up my ruler on the three eighths of an inch mark. And we'll call this waist. My next piece, I want three eighths of an inch. And again, if you're cutting out and you don't feel comfortable just leaving that amount, cut it a half an inch away from the cut sides. Seam allowance here. I need seam allowance on this side, this side, and this side. So I'll leave myself, like I said, three eighths of an inch. We can get rid of fabric B now. I've got one more side to cut here. So I'll cut that off at three eighths of an inch. We'll put that in our waste bucket. For section A, I have piece six, piece five, and piece four. And it all fits back like a puzzle piece. Now I'm going to go to my next fabric. Now if I was cutting out all of my sections at one time, I would put all my bees, bee fabrics all together. So now I'm going to go on to fabric C. I'll take my pieces off because they're tiny and I'll just press them on there so I don't lose them. Now I've got some scraps in here that I'll just take I think I'll get it out of there. Remember wrong side of the fabric up. So now here is my one section. I'll move this over a bit here. So now I'll place this piece on and because I like to keep the straight of grain I'm going to place the side that has my seam allowance where I can see it and I'll need to add seam allowances on these sides. So I'm going to place that on there a little bit away from the edge to allow myself a little bit of extra fabric. And the next piece, this piece, if you can see it, it doesn't have any seam allowances on any of the edges. Uh, where's the camera here? But anyway, that little piece doesn't have any seam allowances added to it at all. So I'm just going to place it over. Uh, I'll just take a guess. And I'm just going to put it on there. Normally, I would cut out and then try to save as much fabric as possible. So there we have our two pieces. And I'm going to, I'm going to take this one off so I can cut and I don't cut into that. I'll put it back on later. So I'm going to cut three eighths of an inch away on all the sides. Is this making sense? I hope it is. Remember any questions, just ask. Trying to keep an eye on the chat and everything. Now this, I would probably save 
because I do a lot of paper piecing, I'm going to save this because of the simple fact that I might be able to use it, believe it or not. So there's my first piece. Now I just need one more. And I don't have enough to put that on and leave it. So that's going to go over in my fabric. Now I'm going to lay this piece on and making sure that I have seam allowance on all sides. And we'll lay it over here. And I'll press that on so I can cut around it. And now I'll cut it out so I have 3 8 of an inch on all sides. How's everybody doing today? I'm just going to cut that across. Okay, three eighths there. There's another piece I can save. And I need about three eighths of an inch there. And there's my waist. It goes into the waist bucket. I now have my fabrics for section A2 and A3. I'm feeling much better, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Um, they changed my medication and uh, one of my my potassium was high, which apparently isn't good, and they couldn't figure out why. But my blood pressure was extremely high. Okay, now I'm going to go on to my D fabric, and I'm going to cut out section A1, which is my D fabric. So I'm going to pull that off and I want to be cutting with the wrong side of the fabric up. And let's see, let's, uh, this is just a scrap, so I'm not worried about where I'm going to cut it. So um, let's cut it from here. I'll set this off to the side. So I'm going to lay this on and I can see my seam allowances there so I know I don't have to add the extra there. I'm going to take this and we'll set it, oh, uh, let's put it here. Then I can cut along here, here, and here and I won't waste too much fabric. I'll probably reposition this in a minute and you'll see me do that. Okay, so from that edge, I need three eighths of an inch and I can move it a little bit closer to the edge. Just lay it down so I've got about three eighths of an inch there. And now I'm going to just cut out my piece around there. So I'll leave a little extra on this side. I'll cut out along that edge at three eighths of an inch. Or you can, like I said, cut away half an inch. So there's, I only have one piece cut out of my print. And again, remember, wrong side of the fabric up. And I'll just cut off that, but I'm going to follow the shape. That's waste. Okay, now when I put this back together, I'm going to lay it out on my board so you can see what I'm doing. 
So now we're going to take it just normally I don't do this. I just gather up my fabrics and put them in number order. But I want to show you how we have all our pieces put together. And number three goes here. Number one goes here. Number two goes here. And five goes here. So that's exactly the way they're going to be put together. So now what I do is I am going to put them in number order. I've circled. This is section A1. That is the first piece I'm going to put down. And when I'm doing all the pieces at one time, I would take my paper and do everything like this. So now my next piece I'm going to add is A2. I'll put that down. Three, four, five, and six. I'm now all ready to go ahead and start stitching. I'll move this off to the side a little bit. So what is everybody doing today? I know that some of the viewers <laughs> um, Hi Vicki Watch this on Kathy Kathy's live stream yesterday. Yes, Kathy was struggling. I know she is. She does. But um, I have now used paper piecing for almost all my all my uh, quilting stitching. It I just have developed a system that I can just do paper piecing and it works so much better for me, not for everybody. But you're, yeah, you're, is it tomorrow that you're live with Stephen? I'm not sure if, or is that on Wednesday? I can't remember which day. On, or on the Zoom, Stephanie. Wednesday, okay. Yeah, and that's the Zoom. Yeah, I haven't been able to join in on any of the Zooms. I've even missed my, uh, uh, with uh, Yvette, I haven't been on any really Zoom meetings or anything. Um, actually, Mona was the one that I got back um, joining in Zoom. Hi, Shala. Shallow's my daughter, as you probably know. Okay, so now we have everything in order, and I'm ready to stitch everything. I have eliminated um, uh, using a light box or whatever. The only time I might need a light box is when I'm doing my first piece, but because I cut my pieces out, um with uh, extra around it, I'm ready to go. So now I need my little piece. Actually, yes, I need this. So we'll use the one that I cut. It's still usable. <laughs> okay, our first piece is A1 D fabric. And as I'm putting my pieces together, I always do a double check to make sure that I'm using the right color of fabric. So I'm going to place my fabric down exactly the way you see it here. For the first piece, I'll take my pattern piece off. I'm going to press it down on there so I don't lose it. And I'm going to take my pattern piece or my stitching piece 
and I'm going to lay it down on there. You can see that there's enough on the outside edges for me to trim off later. When I fold this side up, I've got lots of fabric. I have piece number two underneath there. I've got lots of fabric here. I've got lots of fabric here. And I've got lots of fabric here. So believe it or not, now I have my pressing sheet here. The only reason I use that when I'm pressing from the right side is that the more you press the freezer paper on things, it does lose its stickiness. So now I'm just going to take and press that right down. My A piece is in position. I've got lots of fabric around the other edge. And like I said, I could I could press it down on here and then remove it. It just takes some of the stickiness off the plastic coated side. And remember, freezer paper is plastic coated, not wax coated. So that's in place. I'm going to look here. I've got A1 down. Here's my section A2. That's the next section I want. So now, how do I know where it is? Well, I'm going to set this over here. I want to fold along the line between A1 and A2. Because I've pre-folded this, it's going to make it easy for me just to fold along that line and then release the paper or the fabric from the paper. Okay, I'm going to double check. Yep, I have it folded along the line between A1 and A2. And if I cover up, I can see A2. Now here's where we're going to trim away. If you have the add a quarter ruler. No problem, Stephanie. I'm so glad that you stopped in. We'll see you later. Okay, now um, I'm going to trim away so that I have a quarter of an inch seam allowance and of course I lost my ruler. Here it is. Now you don't need an add a quarter ruler. You can use a regular ruler. Just find your quarter inch mark and line that up with the edge of the paper. And if you have a quarter ruler, quarter inch ruler, add a quarter ruler, I guess it's called, isn't it? You'll line your, the lip of your quarter or your add a quarter ruler up with the edge of the folded edge of your paper. And everything, if you're using regular paper, you'll be doing the same things. The only thing is you might have to pin your piece on. By using the freezer paper, I don't have to use any pins at all, and everything stays flat when I'm cutting my quarter inch. Okay. Now, I've laid out my section, and I have everything so I can read it. This is my number two piece. Remember, I cut it with the wrong side of the fabric up. I am going to lay that down so it looks exactly, exactly like this. I'll fold that back. 
if you can see wrong side of the fabric up wrong side of the fabric up and now all I have to do is take this piece and this piece and put it right sides together keeping it folded I'll just put these two pieces right sides together and I'm going to leave that paper on because I left myself three-eighths of an inch. So now I'm going to quickly go to the sewing machine. And I just have to make sure my sewing machine's at the right settings. And I will switch cameras so you can see it. Do we have any questions? No questions so far? If you're watching and not chatting, just pop in and just say hi. Tell us where you're from. And again, you don't need to chat. I have, I believe, subscriber mode on. Okay, so there I have right sides together. I'm ready to take this to the sewing machine. So I'll switch the camera to the sewing machine so you can see what I'm doing. And here we are. So this is what it should look like. And now I am going to stitch right along the folded edge of that paper. Oh good Mona. I'm glad everybody's just listening or whatever. If you do have any questions, just let me know. How are the kids, Shala? And hubby? Hi, Kelly. How are you doing today? Okay, so I am at the sewing machine. And I should show you the foot. I think I've showed this in other videos, but here is the foot that I'm using. And it has, I think you can see it, pardon me, you can see it on the back. It has a little metal guide right down the center. And that is um, the uh, stitching, you line that up. It's called a stitch in the ditch foot, I think. And I'm going to try and get this so you can see it. There you go. So when I put this foot on, I know that if I keep this little bar thing here along the edge of the paper, it's going to give me a quarter of an inch seam. So I'll put that back on. Oh, I'm glad to hear. How was your uh, cruise? I always wanted to go on a cruise. Lived in Victoria, BC for a couple of years. My oldest daughter was born there. I know I saw some of your, um, your videos that you put up for, about the cruise. Okay, so now, hopefully this is showing up okay. I can see both pieces of my fabric. And instead of stitching through the paper, I'm going to stitch beside the paper right along that line. The reason I do it this way is because if I turn this over and I have to line it up along that line. There is a chance that this piece, unless it's pinned, is going to go wonky on me. Oh, yeah, Kelly, the the cruise was great videos to come the other ship wi-fi 
is too slow for uploads. Yeah. Okay, back to what I was doing. So by flipping the, this back, I can check and everything's all lined up. And I'm not going to get it. I don't have to use pins. I just sew right along that line. This foot lines up right along the edge of the folded paper. And I can start stitching anywhere. I don't have to try and start stitching at a certain point, And I don't have to end at a certain point. I've got my stitch length 2.0 on my machine. It also, by using this method, you don't have to have your stitch length at a shorter stitch length to uh, rip out paper because we're not ripping out the paper. Um, if I do make a mistake, which I've done many times, um, I don't uh, I don't have to try and pick out real tiny stitches. So now I'm going to just go ahead and start stitching, keeping that center bar. I need my needle down. And I that allows me to stitch right up next to the folded edge of the freezer paper. And I'll just stitch right off the end. Started at one end, stitched off the end. And now I'm going to trim off my threads. I will get better at doing videos. I'm not the greatest. I'm just going to trim some threads off here, and you can see I got a bit of a nest there, but I'm not going to worry about that. So you can see that I've stitched along this side. You can see my stitching right there. And then on this side, that's what it looks like from there. And there's that thread. Another little thread. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the pressing and cutting. So that's what it looks like right now. Now I'm just going to take it and with it on my board, fold that back and now flip it over. I can now see my pattern pieces on there. And I'll just take that off. I'm done with that piece so I don't lose it because I can use it if I want to make another butterfly. I have a pattern piece to cut out and I don't have to guess every single time. So now I'm going to use, as Stephanie calls it, magic juice. And I lost my magic juice. There it is. Off to the side where I keep everything else. How are we doing so far? Is everybody... Is this making sense to everybody? Okay, nobody wants to say anything or doesn't have any questions, so... So now, I'm going to take my magic juice and I'm going to run that along that seam and I've got plenty on there and then I'm just going to finger press it into the finished position and if you don't trust yourself or whatever great um, if you don't trust yourself you can hold that up to a light source and make sure that you've got enough fabric but I've found that I have always had enough fabric so now here's where the pressing sheet 
the Teflon pressing, Teflon or silicone, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's for baking. These things, you put them in the oven on your baking pan and put your cookies on and it's heat resistant anyway. So now I can fold it back. And here's where I am, my little mini iron is great. And I'm going to just press along the seam. I don't want to touch my iron to the freezer paper. It's not the end of the world, but there is plastic on here. And if you do touch it to your iron, it is going to stick and make your iron guppy. Goopy. It's not guppy. That's a fish. Goopy. I have done applique with starch before, but I do my FPP by sewing on the paper. I don't mind doing it. Good. Yep, and it's like I'm not I'm not here to change anybody's way of doing things. Just some of the tips that I give you might help. So I have that in position now, and the freezer paper will stick to the fabric better if you press it to uh, press it on the right side. So now I'm just going to press along that number two. And it's just so that when I fold the paper back for section three, um, it, the, the uh, freezer paper doesn't stick to the fabric. So now if I get lost or if I have to step away or whatever, when I come back, I'm looking here, I can see that I was working on the next section, which is section A, piece three. So I'll set that down and I'll fold it along the line where I can see. I'll line this up here. I want to have my paper folded on the piece I'm working on so I can see number three. I'd love to do EPP. So now I'm going to fold that along the line so I can see the E3. And here's my excess fabric that I'm going to cut off. So again, taking your ruler. And it, the thing is, this doesn't have to be a quarter of an inch because of the simple fact that if you're sewing on the line, it doesn't matter with the seam allowance. So I've lined up my quarter inch mark on my ruler against the folded edge of the freezer paper and I'm going to cut that off. And there's my waist. So now I'm going to look at my diagram and I'm going to pick up piece three and I'm going to lay it on top so it looks exactly like the picture. I'll flip my paper back, put my cut edges together, wrong side of the fabric, wrong side of the fabric. The only thing I have to do is pick this up and put right sides together. That's what it looks like from this side. That's what it looks from that side and now I'll just take and stitch all the way along. Remember I don't have to use any pins because I can hold my pieces. There's no excess paper on the right hand side. It's all done from this side which I won't get if it's a large piece of um, if it's a large pattern, like an el the elephant pattern, you might have a lot of paper on the side. If you're going to stitch through it, the paper, then you'd stitch here. Even if you're using freezer paper, you can stitch through the paper and then peel it away. It's just this method that I'm showing you 
I have saved all my pieces and I don't have to go and redo them. I don't have to print another uh, page out. I can reuse this piece. So now that I have section three on, I'll stitch right along the edge of the folded paper. Forgot where I was here. Okay, back at the sewing machine. I'm still in the corner here, see me? Sorry, too much information. Okay, so now I'm gonna lay this down. I can see my paper on the left. I can see my quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna stitch down there. Don't have to back stitch. Don't have to line anything up. I can just whiz right through it. Trim my threads. So there you can see I've stitched along the paper. That's what it looks like from the back. So now we'll go back to the cutting table. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. You're gonna have lunch, Kelly? Great, oh, you're big stitch quilting, that's hand quilting, right? If I'm correct. Oh, Terry does the same thing. She stitches through or stitches along that so you can reuse it. Yep. Perfect. Well, Kelly, enjoy the rest of your day and relax. Okay, so here we were with our piece. Bye, Kelly. Hope to see you again. Okay, so now this is exactly the way it came off this, the sewing machine. I'm just pressing, laying it flat. And I'm going through this really slow. I'm sorry if it's annoying or whatever to some people who have already done this and they have their own way of doing it. This is just the way I do to keep my head straight. So now I can peel that little piece off. I'm done with A3 and I'll just iron it down to my surface. And now again I'm going to use the magic juice. Now at this point I'm going to say um, there is a myth about freezer paper that you can't press your seams open. And if you stitch through the paper, you can't. But if you stitch along the line, you can. It's a little tricky, but it can be done. And that is simply by lifting this up pressing your seam open, tucking everything back in, and just making sure everything gets lined up properly. But I'm not going to do that with this. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mona. So now I'm going to fold this into the finished position. And you can see the section of the butterfly is coming together. Just give it a little finger press. Take it to the ironing surface and with my little mini iron. Um, if you're doing this with a large iron, um, I also have um, this iron here. But I prefer to do use this one when I'm paper piecing. Now, I've used my little mini iron. So now what if you were using your big iron? And it's like, oh, I can't place my big iron down on that. No, you can't. But what you can do is finger press it into position, turn it over like this, and then use your big iron. And then you won't get any of that plastic coating on your iron. And that's why I like the pressing sheet. If you don't have the pressing sheet, it's not going to matter either. It's just that the more you iron onto 
iron the freezer paper onto a fabric or a pressing surface, it's just going to lose some of its stickiness, that's all. Okay, let's go on to the next pieces, and I'm going to go a little faster this time. I know where I left off because here is my A4 section fabric B. I'll fold this over so I know I have to press along the line between 3 and 4. I'll cover up everything so I can see section 4. Fold it back. If my fabric gets stuck, I'll just release it. I'm just going to remove that. Line up so I have a quarter of an inch of fabric left beyond the folded edge of the paper. And there's my quarter inch seam allowance. Fold that back so I can read everything. Now I'm going to take section four, flip that back, so that's exactly what it looks like on the paper. Flip this back, line up my cut edges again, right sides together, fold my paper back, and take that to the sewing machine. And I'm, unless somebody wants to see how I stitched it, I'm just going to take it over to the sewing machine and. Uh, just quickly stitch that. Sorry if my sewing machine's a bit loud. Just trimming my threads now. So there it is. That's the way it came off the machine. If your fabric starts to come apart, just take it over to your pressing surface and just press it from the right side and it'll stick again. So now I'm going to take my paper off. Press it down so I don't lose my piece. I can use it over again. Take my precision piecing easy press fabric treatment that I put into a water brush. Fold it back into the finished position, and it's covering the section I need. If you're in doubt, hold it up to the light, and you can see, or I can see, or the other way is to flip it over. Fold there. I've got enough here. Fold back here. And I've got enough here. So I know I've got lots. I just press it along the seam. Press that section four. And now again, there's nothing flopping. I don't have any edges flopping off the side of my freezer paper. It's holding everything and I'm not going to have the chance of one piece of fabric slipping underneath and stitching it. So where was I? I was at A5. Look for my A5 on my pattern piece. Fold that back and release anything that got stuck. Double check to make sure I'm using the right piece. <coughs> Excuse me. Trim so I have my quarter inch. Lay it so I can read everything. Take the next piece that I need to use, match it up so it looks exactly like that, line up my cut edges, 
again, wrong sides of fabric facing up. Put right sides together. No problem, Mona. Mona has to leave and go get a snack. Have one for me too. And thank you for coming, Monica. I call you Monica. I don't I should just call you Mona, but Okay, so now I'm just going to take that to the sewing machine and stitch along that line and I'll then I'll come back and do the last piece and then I'll show you the next thing I do. So I'm just going to quickly stitch this down. Okay, so I'm back now. Take that piece off, stick it down, and iron it down. Water brush. If you haven't tried the this precision piecing treatment, fabric treatment, you really do. It is amazing for making seams flat. Just super so now you can see that when I folded that into the finished position, I've got lots of fabric. So when I do cut out my next pieces, I can actually cut a little bit less than 3 8 of an inch. But I don't mind having that much waste. So now I'll just press it from the right side into the finished position. And I'm going to press it from the wrong side as well. And that's just to hold those pieces down so there's no loose pieces anywhere for to get caught underneath when I go to do my next step. Where was I? I was at A6, which is right here. Lay it down, put it into the finished position. That's where I need to fold. And I'll fold and remove that. Trim away for the quarter inch seam allowance. And now put that into the finished position. Take my section A6, line it up so I can see it exactly. Fold back the paper. Line up the cut edges. Right sides together and stitch that seam. And again, I'm not going to bore you with sewing straight line down the edge of the paper. And there I've stitched it down. This is our last piece. I can now take this piece off, lay it down, I sound like a broken record don't I? Fabric treatment. Fold here, fold there, that's okay. So now I'm going to fold this into the finished position. Take it to the iron. <clears throat> Press it from the paper side so it holds everything down. So when I go to trim it, everything is secure. There's no floppy edges. Now I can cut it with 
everything from the outside. I never trim anything off of the outside edges until I have it totally completed. At this point, you can go on to the next section or you can cut around the edges. When I cut around the edges, um, I use my quarter or the line on my ruler. And I line up the same ruler that I used when I was cutting it. And I'm going to line the quarter inch mark right along. You can see that there's a dotted line, which is your cutting line. The solid line is the stitching line. I'm going to line up that quarter inch mark of my ruler on the stitching line. And that yellow marking is going right over top of that black line. And I'll trim away. I don't use, I don't line my ruler up so that I can see or and cut along the line. I always line my ruler up and do the quarter inch from there. So I'll just do the same thing on all four sides. When you get into a rhythm of doing this, you will find that you'll get so much faster and it will come naturally to you and you won't have to do so much thinking. So now there is my section already. That's what it looks like from the right side, the finished side. And that is this piece right here. I'm only going to do one, one piece. Everything else is just repeating the same steps. Here is my waist. That's all the waist I have. And I could have done less, but that's lots normally for what I do. I just didn't cut it, um, you know, I left myself plenty. So there it is. Now, these pieces here, you can gather them up use them again. You don't have to guess at what size of piece you need. You can just go ahead. Um, just give me a second here. Okay. And put them in a little baggie. And there you have your piece is ready for the next butterfly you want to do. Now, I take my paper off after I've got all my sections done. And I do take my paper off. Now, there's a trick to when you take your papers off. The seams are going this way. This one's going this way. I haven't backstitched at the beginning and end of any seam. So I'm just going to fold my paper back. And sometimes if you're using new freezer paper, um, it'll be hard to separate the fabric from the paper. But now because that seam is going that way, which end did I do? Okay. I want to make sure I don't pull any of my stitches apart here. So with my little pokey tool, I call it, I'm going to find an edge that I can get in underneath. And it's this edge here. I should have separated it from here. 
There we go. Okay. Now, this is a point where I use my letter opener. I'll put it in underneath. This seam is going this way, and this seam is going this way, and my seams are going that way. So when I go to take my paper off so I don't undo any of my stitches, I'll slide my letter opener underneath and slide it this way. And then I haven't distorted my fabric by pulling any stitches out. Now, the reason I leave the paper on until I've got to this point right here is because I don't want to forget what piece this is. If you take it off and you forget, just iron it back on and then it'll come off easy later. So that is that part of it there. I would go on and do the same thing for any other sections. We still have a few people watching. Glad to see. Are there any questions on what I have done? No? Is anybody still with me? <laughs> Nobody's chatting. I guess maybe you'd like to see me. Oh, um, when I'm done putting the, uh, the sections together after I have them all so together using the same method I did like this, I can now again, when I take the paper off, I can put it all into one bag because everything's labeled and I can reuse that pattern again using different fabrics. Okay. Well, hopefully there's still somebody watching, and so I am going to call it a day, and I hope that you found one little thing helpful by watching the way I put my paper piecing together. So we'll say goodbye, and uh, the proper way to do this, just hang on and we'll, there we are. No problem, Terry. That's okay. I just needed to know if there was still somebody still out there listening. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Oh, you're busy watching me. Oh, gosh. Um, thank you, everyone, for stopping in, and I'll see you in the next time I come live. Oh, and by the way, um, I am going to be doing a um, giveaway. It will be open to everyone all people um, and uh, it will be a uh, an electronic gift card and um, so it's open for anyone the other thing is um, I have been neglecting my knitting subscribers so the next video that I do live is going to be um, doing um, Pardon me, I'll be doing knitting. So um, anyone who is wants to just join in and chat with me while I do knitting, you're welcome. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. And thank you very much for all the comments. Thank you, Rob. And have a great day, Rob. What time is it there, by the way, Rob? I'm going to wait for Rob's answer unless he, he left already. Rob is in the Netherlands, so there's quite a time difference between where I am and where he is. And I am in Calgary, Alberta. Okay, great, everyone. Thank you for joining me, and uh, make sure you pop in the next time I go live. Bye-bye, everyone.